Welcome to Tal Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Heal. What's going on, everybody? And today we're back to talk about the final two issues of Marvel Comics' big summer event, Blood Hunt. Todd, let's start with issue number four. Tell us what happens in issue number four. So uh, basically, the uh, Temple of the Last Blasphemy has risen right in the middle of New York City. Uh, we've got a couple of teams here off on different missions. Dr. Strange and Clea have gone to Latveria to ask Dr. Doom for help. Uh, what's he want to, as return for playing his part in this, he wants to be the Sorcerer Supreme. We have Tigra and Hunter's Moon on Asgard, along with a uh, long-lost old Marvel baddie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're going to release someone or something on Asgard. Uh, whoever that is returns, a hero returns, and we're set up for our final showdown. Yeah, so this one, uh, the last two issues here, I mean, they're pretty action-heavy, I would say. This one, you yeah. probably get the more story than you get in issue five. Um, so as you mentioned, uh, strange and clear, they're off to Latveria to see none other than Dr. Doom, yep. Victor Vaughn himself. Played here by RDJ. Yes. Yeah. Already in comic form. Yeah. Already, uh, <laughs> let's, let's not even touch that yet. Uh, but yeah, so they're the basically that's your B plot for this book is what is Strange up to? Strange at one point discovers that he, in his kind of a corporeal form, mm -hmm. he's been kind of hamstrung this entire series because Blade axed him off in the first issue. Right. So he's kind of been left in his astral projection form. Yeah. He's still the source of Supreme, but. He knows to, to kind of defeat the what's coming, that they're going to need somebody that can kind of wield some power and has some power in the Marvel Universe. That's none other than Dr. Doom. So he kind of turns to him and kind of, what does Doom want? He wants to be the Sorcerer Supreme. He wants to be the yes. Sorcerer Supreme, yes. He wants the cape and the title. That's right. That's pretty much all you get with yeah. it. That's all you get when you become <laughs> Sorcerer Supreme, apparently. You get the cape and the title and like a business card. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so he wants to be Sorcerer Supreme. He makes a deal with Stephen Strange, basically, that says, I I'll save the world. I'll use the power of the Sorcerer Supreme. Once the world is saved, I'll return the power back over to you. Is basically the oath that he has him kind of swear. Right. Uh, your A plot is what's going on with Blade. Blade is revealed finally here as we've kind of hypothesized this whole, e this whole series. Blade, probably not Blade. Blade, probably possessed by someone, probably some kind of vampire lord. Oh, look, it is. He was. <laughs> he was He was possessed by, uh, is Blade is Varney. Varney. Jim Varney. Jim Varney. <laughs> no, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Varney or Varnea, however you would say that. The first vampire, so this is basically canonically, this is... The one, the genesis of all vampires, the uh, the before Dracula, the alpha, the omega, the beginning of it all. Yeah, so there's some there's some explanation that um, basically for books we didn't read that happened prior yes. to prior, prior to this yes. series that says Marie Laveau prepared Blade as the host for the spirit of Varney in the comic uh, we didn't read, of course, and uh, it's basically. It seems like, uh, I think Dracula says this is like the second attempt at one point to like capture Blade. He I was, think so, yeah. He, it was unsuccessful the first time that yep. Varney or Varnea tried to do this uh, and uh, successful the second time. So what did you think about the reveal? And it comes pretty quickly and pretty nonchalantly because Blade and Black Panther and the, the Blood Covenant are just walking and Black Panther's like, you're not Blade, are you? You're not Blade, are you? And I'm just like, that's... And we've did a whole series, and it's like a very kind of, I don't know, I felt like a very nonchalant kind of way to reveal it. It was just like, yeah, yeah of course I'm not Blade. Because we're here, we're issue four of five, yeah. so we gotta got to pick up pace, got to move at tempo. <laughs> yeah, what did you think about how they revealed it and uh, who it turned out to be, I guess? I mean, I could say we kind of had our doubts from the beginning that that was actually Blade proper that was doing all this. We kind of figured he was possessed by something or something that took him over, so... It was kind of par for the course of what I think I was expecting. Yeah, it's um, uh, kind of the explanation here, too, that just kind of for Varney or Varnea's backstory, uh, apparently uh, was an Atlantean wizard king yeah. who turned himself into a vampire, basically the creating the concept of vampires themselves. So, right. like, it's kind of shown that they've kind of, like, channeled some dark forces, and they basically they were fucking around to see what they could find out. <laughs> and in doing so, they fucked around and found out that I can create vampires. Right. And the concept of being a vampire. And basically the plan now that since the temple has kind of been dropped on New York City, Varney plans to channel the dark force and kind of become the unliving dark force, so to speak. And that's that's kind of where we're at in issue four. Uh, the C story 
is what's going on on Asgard with yes. Hunter's Moon and Tiger. You want to tell us what happens there? So they're on Asgard, and they're going to a vault, and they're trying to free someone, but they both say they don't have the power to do it, but they've brought along somebody who does, and it's an old Marvel villain called The Wrecker, yeah. and he's got an Asgardian crowbar. I think <laughs> he makes the comment, what better way to break into an Asgardian prison than with an Asgardian crowbar? Yeah, th- <laughs> this character, is this like... Is that- was he like a Spider-Man villain, or like is he just I, best anybody? I can remember? I think he featured a lot in Thor comics. I think he was part of. I think they were. I think they were called the Wrecking Crew. Now I may mm. be wrong. I think it was him and two other guys. Mm-hmm. And I think they all kind of had like uh, construction type weapons as their yeah, weapons. Right, right. <laughs> it's like I've got a crowbar. Yeah, right. I've got a drill <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, I'm not. When I when I saw it on the page, I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. I was like, I don't yeah. really, I don't really know who this is. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, all right, he's got an Asgardian crowbar, I guess. I, I don't know a lot about him. I was not aware who he was, but like, say he, I don't think he showed yeah. up in a while. But he, I, I don't keep up with modern stuff, or yeah. So I don't even know how who they let free was on Asgard to begin with, but. They actually released the uh, the spirit of the moon knight, Conchu. Yeah, Conchu. So basically, Conchu. Uh, they uh, they release Conchu, and he kind of like uh, puts his dead army forces uh, basically across the uh, the planet, trying to basically that's that's the army that they needed to go up against. Um, the dark army, the dark the army, army, yeah, yes. the, the vampire army here across the earth, and uh, who's leading it? It's also the resurrected uh, Khonshu's resurrected son, so to speak, Moon Knight, Moon Knight yes. um, with a different costume than I've traditionally seen. I thought it was a really cool design, look nice for Moon Knight. So now we've got an army. Uh, of dead and an army of undead, I guess something like that. Getting ready to go down. Getting ready to to <laughs> to, uh, to take uh, the fight to each other here across the planet, and then we've got kind of two teases for what's to come. In some of our ending panels, we get Black Panther. He's finally removed the uh, the spike that's been uh, implanted and impaled in Thor's head since like issue one of this series, mm-hmm. kind of freeing the God of Thunder finally. And then we get a tease of kind of what's next: uh, Avengers versus Jim Varney. <laughs> Blood Coven coming next issue, another rematch of the Blood Coven and the Avengers. Yep. That's kind of our tease. Um, overall, again, there's not we're we're kind of down to the nitty gritty. So there's not a lot of reveals here. Like you get the one big reveal, yeah. you get your backstory and you get your set up for issue five. It's just kind of putting the puzzle pieces in place. Right, yeah. So what did you think? Give me your review score and your final thoughts here for issue four before we get to five. Uh, honestly, I think I'm going to go a seven here. I thought it was a good issue. Like you mentioned, we're just kind of putting our final pawns and pieces together, getting the battle set up that's going to come, this centerless thing in issue five. I think anytime you can dust off an old Marvel villain like the Wrecker, you know, I'm all for stuff like that. So right. I thought it was a pretty decent episode. 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 Issue. Did you, <laughs> did, you, did you watch it, Todd? I watched it in my head movies. Yeah, he had, a, he had an audio <laughs> book version of it. Um, it was read to him by his doctor. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm i going to go with a six here. I think it was decent, kind of sticking within the realm of what we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. Um, the tease of Doom becoming a player was... Something that interested me, mm-hmm. obviously another showdown with the the Avengers and the Blood Coven, and now this kind of unliving, uh, you know, force for uh, the Dark Hold and um, you know all that kind of stuff that Varnea is trying to do. So like all that, like it's good setup. Again, I think you know the the hope is that this one is another kind of setup to where we get something even stronger in the finale, which we'll talk about in a second. So I felt right. this was kind of it was kind of decent. You know, there there's a little bit of like prior knowledge you need. You don't have to have it, but there's a little bit of prior knowledge in the whole Marie Laveau and trying to possess Blade at some point and like yeah. that's for us. You're like, okay. Yes. It's for referring us to tie ins. Yeah. Or tie ins. <laughs> I think this is I don't even know if this was tie ins. I think it was in one of Blade series or something. Yeah, I think this it? was yeah. probably pre Blood Hunt so yeah. I think actually the there's another referenced uh, book in issue five, and I think this was like a long time ago type. Yeah, you know, kind of uh, this is like pre blood hunt type of information. Yeah, I think it was Thor, Thor's first battle with Varney, I think something I like think that. It was that yeah. Was it, and yeah. it's like so a little bit of prior knowledge would help you here. Again, I not didn't know who Varney was, Varnea, however you would say it. Mm-hmm. 
But there's good teases here. You don't. It's a it's a setup issue. It's your yeah. it's everything. Your pieces are arranged on the board. Now you want to see how they kind of like right. uh, how they kind of fall into place and uh you know who can win the the chess game here basically at the end of it kind of moving on to issue five so tell us what happens in issue five todd so this is it this is the final showdown you got the avengers you got honshu his minions moon knight uh, spider-man blade's daughter dracula Mm -hmm. they all show back up to battle with varney you got varney his dark forces the blood coven uh, you know, Doom has now accepted the mantle of the Sorcerer Supreme. He's got the, the uh, Strange Academy working with him. Can they help turn the tide? Yeah. We'll find out. We'll find <laughs> out. This is, again, now that your pieces are in place, this is a pretty, other than maybe the last few, maybe 10 pages, this is mostly a, a action-heavy. Action-heavy book, yeah. Yeah, like, um, and until you get to, like, the last few pages when everything is kind of wrapped up, then you're going to get some some story beats. But it's a lot of, it's time for fight. Yes. You know, Thor's free. He's he's going at some of the blood coven. The Avengers are showing up, as you mentioned. Brielle, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, everybody's kind of showing up all in one place. Uh, that's your A story. That's your big fight here. Moon Knight, after kind of leading the forces of Conchu across the earth, he kind of eventually joins that fight as well. Mm-hmm. And then the background, our B story, Doom, again, assuming the mantle of the Sorcerer Supreme with the help of Strange Academy, which I know nothing about. I'll be honest with you. There's a big either. fucker back there. Did you notice that <laughs> big that fucker? Big guy, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't know who huge that is. Guy. Hey, you guys, huge. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's a huge person back there. But Doom is getting ready to unleash the spell. He's charging it up. He's doing the spirit bomb, the Goku spirit bomb, charging it up, you know. Yep. Get, lend me your energy stuff. But uh, Bloodline, Brielle still kind of has a part to play here as kind of Dracula has kind of foretold through this whole thing. The only way to stop Blade is as a part of his bloodline, and the only part of his bloodline is Brielle, yeah. his daughter bloodline. Uh, so she goes for the old killing stroke and the stab to Blade, and not so much. Not so D- much. Doesn't, doesn't work out. Seems like uh, Varney is too strong. His possession has been a blade has kind of lasted too long. But uh, Blade slash Varney, uh, he actually, we saw earlier in the book, we never really, f- we figured out what had kind of happened, but for what purpose did Blade turn Miles Morales? And it seems like Miles Morales now has been turned, which makes him part of Blade's bloodline, since that's the only other vampire I guess the Blade has made. Right. At this point, so that makes uh, Miles Morales part of his bloodline and thus so able to uh, help bloodline Brielle strike that killing blow or that stab to Varney as well. What did you think about that little part of the storyline? The only thing that confuses me is, like, was that was that Blade doing that or Varney or whatever? Yeah, because back when he would, would have bit Miles Morales, wouldn't he have been possessed by Varney back then? I would think. I would have thought so. But so. then, why would why would Varney go out of his his way just to turn Miles Morales? Right. Was this slightly before the the full assumption of Blade as and becoming Blade? Is it something that was covered in a tie in we missed? <laughs> I, perhaps, perhaps that could very well be. That's the only part I didn't understand. Is like I understand right. that Blade in whatever way made Miles Morales and turned him. That's what that happened on that rooftop. But I would assume that that was done by a prior or pre-possession blade. Well, that would only way it would make sense. That would be the only way it well, makes that sense. That was a pre-turned if blade. Var- yeah, that. Varnea would have just killed him, you would think, or not even bothered to turn yeah. him. It's like he knew it was going to be needed or something like that. Like, right. Blade saw it coming somehow, but then you're like, well, if he saw it coming, why don't you just tell somebody? You're like, hey, I'm about to get possessed, guy. Like, uh, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn you into a vampire. You go tell the Avengers, I'm about to get possessed. This old vampire spirit is going to take <laughs> me over. They're going to blot out the sun. Tell everyone. Tell everyone. Tell everyone, kid. <laughs> tell everyone. Uh, so that's the one. That's the first kind of problem I yeah. had here is like, I get that Miles was made by Blade, but why and does it make sense that he would make him and not tell him what was going on if he had the wherewithal to make him? seemingly for this purpose. True, so true. that's that's kind of my big first question of this book. Um, we do finally get Doom. He unleashes the spell finally. The spirit bomb is charged. Uh, he unleashes the spell, which is basically to reveal the sun or reveal part of the sun to help with the battle. Right. 
Uh, we see Varney is expelled from Blade and captured by uh, the Scarlet Witch, who was kind of put back in action as well once she was kind of freed from one of the Blood Coven. And uh, Blade, after being stabbed twice by Brielle and Miles Morales, he was stabilized and able to be saved. So we don't lose Blade here. We don't lose any major characters at all in this whole series. I don't think there was a major death there in this was, one. I mean, strangest is in his astral form. His body, I guess, was dead, but he's True. a he's a mystical person. Right. He's a sorcerer. So I mean, now I don't think that really counts. He'll it's get his death, body. Yeah. He'll get his body back somehow. But yeah. I know real major deaths that I can remember mm-hmm. here whatsoever because with Thor being around, Black Panther being around, like none of that, none of that stuff stuck. Yeah. So uh, we see here uh, Strange and uh, Doom. Once the day is saved, Blade is fine. Varney has been expelled. Uh, all is good. The sun is kind of creeping back out from the shadows. And now we're just back to Doom and Strange. And uh, tell us kind of what happens there, Todd. So uh, Dr. Strange is kind of like, well, you know, uh, that's it. You you did your part. Uh, give me my eye of Magamoto back in my cloak. And right. Strange is like, I mean, uh, Dr. Doom's like, well, you know, I said I was going to save the world. And uh, I'm not done saving the world as I see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One world under Doom. Yes. Uh, yeah, so this is where we get, uh, obviously, Doom was never going to give up that power. No. There's always a catch with Doom. So uh, he's not going to give up the cape that easily. And we get our tease at the end of the book. Coming in November. A bigger tie-in, <laughs> a bigger event. Right. One world under doom. You got us. And this, Damn it. <laughs> this is where, like, I really started. I don't know. I kind of felt some type of way. I'm like, I've read these five issues and then got into a story, and I feel like you were just, like, setting me up for something a, else. A bigger miniseries. Yeah, yeah. I felt like I was kind of I was kind of bamboozled a little bit here yeah. is how I kind of felt reading issue five. I was like, when we just kind of had such a nonchalant reveal of, like, who our big bad was, and we got a little bit of information about him, and then, it was, and then we get the fight and everything, it just felt, I don't know. Like, I guess maybe I had higher expectations of, like, this would be something more... Ultimately, this is not really... Nothing resonates to happen in this story. There's no real long-term lasting impact of this story other than the Doom part. Yeah, it was like they did this little thing just to have a reason to give the power of Source Supreme to Doom for their bigger mini series right. I feel like they're coming in November. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like none of the none of the stakes or things that happen here really have a big impact on the Marvel universe as a whole. Right. At all. Everything basically resets back to zero. No one really dies. The sun's back. All that stuff. Mm-hmm. Really the only thing that happens is Doom gets that power to to make me buy One World Under Doom in a few months. And that kind of pisses me (laughs) off a little bit. It kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth because I'm like, I was reading this. You you think coming out of these event stuff, maybe I just, again, being out of comics for a while, maybe I just have a, maybe my thinking about event comics and summer events are different. But I'm like, remember we used to have like, you come out of something and like some things, some, 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 some stuff got shook up. Yeah, like something in the universe somebody was, died, was reset or something got changed around. There was a crisis. Yes. <laughs> there was a bunch of Earths and there was no, there was right. one Earth and there was a bunch of Earths right. again. Right, Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you just expect kind of Earth-shattering stuff to come out of these events. Maybe that's the old school 2011 and prior comic book me thinking about that, the pre-Flashpoint yeah. event series, because right. that's about the last event that I read. But, like, this is one of those that, like, you know, it was it, it as everything is. It's it's hyped up, and then really at the end of the day, it really becomes largely inconsequential, other than Doom getting the cape. Yeah, and that kind of bugs me. It kind of it kind of really does does bug me, and it kind of left me with a little bit of a bad taste. Yeah, a little bit of bad taste and a little bit of saltiness uh, overall with this. Like, uh, we'll, we'll I'll give my rest of my take here and in, uh, in my final thoughts. So, Ty, give us your review score and your final thoughts for. Uh, Marvel's Blood Hunt number five, the final issue. Uh, I think for the final issue and for my the series as a whole, I'm gonna I'm gonna reside here with the six. I think it wound up being pretty decent, just decent. I think uh, initially this was a cool concept. I liked the vampires. Uh, there was a lot of blood and gore at the beginning. I didn't really see a whole lot here at the end. Yeah. Although issue five that we read was not the uh, 
the red, red band. band. Four was, but four was, but I didn't see a lot in that either. Not a lot of action in that. Yeah. Mostly set up. And I just can't help but shake this feeling that maybe there was a lot of interesting stuff went on in tie-ins. That's why this series moves so fast. Right. I don't know. I could be wrong. But I, I'm like you. I just kind of feel like this was like a little preamble they threw out there for something bigger they wanted to do in November because there really wound up being no stakes, no changes, no nothing. It was just a cool little dark corner of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm not Cinematic Universe, but Marvel Comic Universe versus, you know, Dark Forces Vampires. That yeah. was it. Yeah. And it was pretty cool. I mean, I'm not I, I'm not sad this, that I read it. <clears throat> Uh, it's, uh, is it something I'm going to revisit in the future? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Unless they do some kind of cool looking omnibus maybe, but I, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm kind of right there with you. I'm going to go with a five just because like, um, I feel like it, it, it more ended on a mediocre note to me just because of like, like you said, the lack of consequence, the yeah. lacks of, you know, nothing of consequence coming out of this. Like, yep. At the end of the day, the only thing that happened was something that was only set up in the l half of the l fourth issue of a five issue series. Yeah. Like Doom was mentioned early on. It just showed Doom and it showed Latveria because their borders were protected from the vampires. Mm -hmm. Then he's not in the book at all until some part of issue four and he's in like six or seven panels of issue five. And that ends up being the most consequential thing that comes out of it. Nothing with Blade, nothing with his daughter, nothing with Miles Morales, the Avengers, the Blood Coven. Uh, did they even, what even happened to them? I don't guess they died, did they? The Blood Coven? Yeah. I don't they, think so. I don't know. Did they all run away? I don't even remember. Like, I know the sun came out, but like, I don't even remember if they like. There was something at the end about where Dracula was saying something about the light was out now, but it wasn't hurting them, and it was some kind of. Yeah, did it, you catch that? Yeah, he was talking to Spider Man because like Spider Man was all like, "Oh, I'm gonna get you know roasted by the sun," and he's like basically like, "The Earth owes us one." Right. Kind of. I'm like, no, nah, I don't think that. I don't logic think holds. it works that way. I don't think it works. <laughs> I would just love them just like to turn to skeletons. Like, don't worry, kid. The Earth owes us one. Blah! And just, like, get fricasseed right there. But, like, yeah, I, I don't even really remember what happened to the Blood Coven. I'm, I'm assuming they're still out there. But, yeah, it's just, like, I, for me, I thought we were going to get some kind of consequential. I, I figured the the big bad was kind of never going to really live up to my expectation. Yeah. The bad was basically what I expected. I expected some kind of, like, lesser-known vampiric you know, Marvel villain or somebody that they've made up completely for the S based on what had been hinted before. But that, so with that being kind of a lesser reveal with, um, you know, them not fully going for it and being like, yeah, it is just blade, which would have been at this point, I would have like much preferred that. I'm like, yeah, it's just blade. Yeah. He just become bad. And, uh, but yeah, with, with it being doom and doom being not part of, the story that much and that being the big thing. And it feels like you just, you just set me up to build me out of more money for one world under doom in a November. Mini series, yeah. yeah. And this being of no consequence, like it just left a bad taste in my mouth and I'm going to say mediocre for this, this issue, Todd. And I just thought of something cool they could have done. Okay. If they could have let a blade have died in issue five. Mm. Maybe in your red band book, you know, Varney blows up inside of him and they both get blown to bits. There's just chunks of him flying everywhere. Mm -hmm. Of course he's going to come back in a year or so because it's coming. <laughs> right. But you let his daughter step up and accept that mantle of, you know, the, the vampire hunter. Right. Let her run in her own, her, her own series for a while. Yeah. That could have been something consequential that would have came out of this. But in the I end, we're, so. just, we're just set up for... Uh, all hell doom. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and maybe maybe she will have her own series and do something while he's incapacitated for Could a while. Be. But Could I don't be. know. But like that would have been better than just like what we got. And I'm like, it doesn't make me hate the whole thing, but um it we always kind of said this was never going to be like one of those like all time events. No. Like where you just reference and it was always going to fit within this vein of like decent to good. And I think it just, unfortunately I think with it though, it's kind of slipped a little bit in my mind to like, it did at the end. For I me would too. never really see myself revisiting this. Yeah. If it had stuck the landing a little bit more, I'm like, yeah, I could see myself rereading this in two or three years or something like that. But I'm like, nah, I have, 
no, this can yeah. this can stay on the shelf. It was so a really cool concept with some blood and guts. It really, oh, look at this. Yeah. But, you know, in the end, it just kind of kind of fizzled out. Yeah. Maybe we'll come back and cover One Word Under Doom if we're still around in November time. Mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But, yeah, just, just a little deflating, I think, is where we're both at with this. Like, you know, would I say if people are watching this now, like, would you go, again, spend money and go reread this? No, I would say no. pick another event book from the last 10 years that you haven't read and you'll find you know throw a dart at one of them you'll probably find one better than this yep. one yeah at the end of the day is what i would say about it anything else you i'm good all right i think we'll call it that's a wrap for this episode if you enjoy the video please like and subscribe feel free to send us an email or get in touch with us on social media tile capes will return we want to thank you so much for watching until next time bye guys see you guys